Hey guys, it's Bub here, and today we're going to be installing Windows 8.1 on RAM. Yes, you heard me right. Instead of installing Windows 8.1 on our traditional SSD, we're going to be installing it on RAM. If you didn't know, RAM can actually be used as a storage method, although it's not the most ideal scenario, because every time you restart your computer, the RAM gets cleared, meaning you lose all of your data. However, RAM is extremely fast, in fact, faster than most SSDs, including my 970 EVO. So the first thing we need to do is use a software called Primo RAM Disk to create a RAM disk. Now for Windows 8.1, I'm just going to give it 16,000 megabytes and then click create. From here, we'll use our RAM and go up to 16 gigabytes. Now if we open up Task Manager, we can see here that now we're using 19.2 gigabytes versus when I remove the RAM disk, we're going to have 3.6. So it actually does immediately use all 16 gigabytes. Now you may recall that someone else on YouTube did this video a while ago, and yes, that is true. They even use the same software. However, for this video, I wanted to try Windows 8.1 since it actually uses the least amount of RAM, and in my opinion, it's one of the fastest versions of Windows ever. So putting Windows 8.1 with a very fast CPU, a lot of memory, and a very, very, very fast storage method, I really think we're gonna get some interesting results. Now just to show how fast this actually is, we're going to be running a test on that drive. Now if you remember we selected Z as our drive letter, and this is the RAM disk, so we're going to run just a 1 gigabyte Crystal Disk Mark test. Crystal Disk Mark has just completed its benchmarks, and the window on the left is my Samsung 970 EVO 500 gigabyte SSD. Now this is an NVMe SSD, meaning it is a very fast drive and we're seeing reads at about 3,000, 2,000 megabytes per second, and writes at averaging, I would say, 2,000 megabytes per second. But we look at the window on the right on our 16 gigabyte RAM disk, and we see here that we are 26,000 megabytes per second, 28,000 megabytes per second write, 10,000, 14,000, almost 7,000, 5,000. Yeah, we can obviously see that the RAM is faster than the SSD itself. Which which is why I think running one of the fastest versions of Windows on this drive will make a huge difference. So from here, we're just going to create a new virtual machine, of course, clicking on our Windows 8.1 ISO. So the install times should be impacted by this large jump in a storage method, but we are still installing the Windows 8.1 operating system from the 970 EVO. Now for some reason here, my RAM disk is not showing up, and it's not showing up in here either. And I think it's because I closed the RAM disk thing. Now from here, if I do this and I reopen it, I'm still not seeing it. Okay, so I did actually find out why this wasn't working. It's because I was assigning the RAM disk to a drive letter that was my network drive. So now once we give this an actual drive letter that is not my network drive, it now shows up right here. So we can, of course, now finally go back click on the RAM disk and click OK. Now the sad thing about this is we can't actually install Windows directly to the S directly to the RAM, but I can put the virtual hard drive on the RAM stick, meaning that it should basically work just like it's installing on there. Now here we're gonna give it 14 gigabytes so the RAM has about one and a half gigabytes to breathe. And Windows 8 should install on this. And if it doesn't, I would be surprised. And we'll give it four pro let's give it three processor cores so it has a lot of room to run very smooth. We can power on the virtual machine. Like I said, the install process shouldn't be too impacted by these speeds because we are installing off of my 970 EVO M.2 SSD. But once this boots into it, um, when we get to the install process, like where, where it's actually copying stuff over, that's where we're going to see the big time boost. I'm not sure if you actually knew this, but there is an official Microsoft document with generic setup keys for operating systems. So in instances like where we can't bypass this, there is a generic Windows 8.1 Pro KMS, KMS client setup key that we can just copy over. It won't activate Windows, but it will bypass the product key screen. Now there is a 25 gigabyte recommendation, but hopefully we can at least install something on here. So we're going to go ahead and click next and just get ready to watch this. If I'm right, this should be really fast. Yeah, we're, we're going up in seconds. This is, I'd say it's about a second for each one. This is, this is installing very quickly. I just hope I gave it enough storage. And this is where I say it becomes unreliable. Right here. This is exactly why I said that. I think it is because the, um, the drive got full. 
And now I just configured a new RAM disk with 23.44 gigabytes, so that should give it a little bit more to breathe. But because of this, I'm only giving this just about three gigabytes of RAM because I really don't want to overkill my computer. And so instead of a 16 gig hard drive, I decided to choose a 22 gigabyte. So I'm just gonna skip through this process because we just went through it. So in theory, I should just, this should work, I hope. So because I chose easy install, it automatically skipped to the out of box experience. So I didn't get a chance to show how quick that was. However, just to put it in perspective, it went into the setting up your PC section and within three seconds, it went straight into let's start and brought me to my start menu. And so just to show, I want to show how quick VMware tools would install the machine. Um, so getting it to load up from the DVD, now keep in mind the VMware tools ISO is mounted as a DVD on my SSD. So it also depends a lot on the SSD speed itself. But just to show how quick that this goes, so we're going to do a typical install and just let this go through this. Now obviously this is going to take not a lot of time. This is very fast, very fluid. And so after I install this, I'm going to go through installing some software like the new Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome and just really show how quick this installs. And here we are. We're done installing VMware tools. All we have to do is click finish and restart. And the startup time of this operating system running off of RAM is incredible. So we just posted. We are on the Windows loading screen. Now because this is a virtual machine, it is, of course, limited. If we could actually run Windows on RAM, on a physical machine, I really think this would be faster, but there we go. We're booted up, we just got a cold boot, open up File Explorer, Pictures, Start Menu, Smooth, and go here and let's just type in Notepad, open Notepad, already mad, it's very fast. So here's the Google Chrome installer. It's currently downloading right now, and this of course depends on your internet speed, well, we're just writing to the disk, that's pretty insane. So download is complete and Chrome is installing right now. Um, obviously Chrome takes, oh there we go, we're done. That's how quick Chrome installed. And you know, just generally cruising around the user interface, everything runs very fast, very smooth, very fluent, very um, just generally, obviously my typical system, if I open up settings, it's gonna be very fast. That's expected from an i7 with 32 gigs of RAM and an SSD. When we're talking about a virtual machine with three gigabytes of RAM and a three core processor, it really comes down to how fast everything's gonna load on your storage. And generally, this storage unit, which is the RAM, this is absolutely insane, the fact that we can do this. I, th I believe that I mentioned this earlier in the video, but you may be asking, well, if RAM is so fast, why do we still use SSDs and hard drives? And like I mentioned earlier, it's because RAM doesn't store stuff. I can go here and I can restart the virtual machine all day. This virtual machine can restart all day, no problem. But the moment that I go to my physical machine and I physically restart my physical machine, obviously, whenever a physical machine restarts, it clears your RAM. That's just how it works. And so when I restart the physical machine, all of my virtual machine data will be lost. It would be exactly equivalent to coming in here, clicking, and deleting my RAM disk. That's exactly what it would do. It would completely wipe the operating system, completely wipe any virtual hard disk files that are on this, and it would completely destroy it. That's why we don't use RAM to install operating systems or as a storage medium, just because it would clear itself. So what would the purpose of a RAM disk like this be? You can create a RAM disk to have temporary storage, where let's say I'm importing videos from my camera, I can store them on the RAM disk, and then I can just go in, easily delete the RAM disk, and never forget about it. I can import them, edit them, export, and then delete my RAM disk. If you have high amounts of RAM, you can obviously load stuff on here that's very fast, um, because like we said, we had 26,000 megabytes of read per second, and I think that's pretty incredible, so if we were to import a game that we wanted to run really fast we can put it on here and it would probably load up within an instant over I don't have enough RAM to put on any big games and generally like I said when you restart your computer that's gonna be wiped so that's not really a good idea so the general consensus is that RAM disks would only be used in an instance where you need temporary storage but with that being said thank you guys so much for watching make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here i usually do a ton of different variety content such as technology restorations in general experiment or informational videos you should like subscribe and i'll see you all in the next one